Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's nice to see so many people here and, uh, and to be gathered together. And parents, it's nice to see you on, uh, at this middle school stepping up. You know, when I was a kid, one of my favorite kids' books is, uh, was Where the Wild Things Are. And I don't know if that's a book that, that you all, you eighth graders are familiar with, maybe your parents are, uh, but it was great. It was fabulous. And uh, it was written by uh, Shel Silverstein. Uh, actually, Shel Silverstein wrote The Giving Tree, which is also another great book. Um, but he also wrote a poem called Where the Sidewalk Ends. Um, and I just want to share it with you. It's not very long. Um, there is a place where the sidewalk ends and before the street begins. <clears throat> and there the grass grows soft and white. And there the sun burns crimson bright. And there the moon bird rests from his flight to cool in the peppermint wind. Let us leave this place where the smoke blows black and the dark street winds and bends. Past the pits where the asphalt flowers grow, we shall walk with a walk that is measured and slow and watch where the chalk white arrows go to the place where the sidewalk ends. Yes, we'll walk with a walk that's measured and slow and we'll go where the chalk white arrows go. For the children they mark and the children they know, the place where the sidewalk ends. And if you think about the sidewalk, what a sidewalk is, it's, it's designed for safety. It's designed to get you out of the road. And for pedestrians, or maybe when you're on a bike, you rode your bike on the sidewalk when you were younger. Uh, but many roads don't have sidewalks. And, uh, and you know, I think what Shel Silverstein is talking about is the magic of a sidewalk at some point does sort of end. Uh, and I think if you think of a sidewalk as being your elementary school years, culminating with your middle school years, you know, that sidewalk is ending. And now you're, you're ready to get onto the, into the road. And you are ready. You're really prepared. You were probably get ready to get into the road earlier this year. And we made you stay on the sidewalk. But now you're going to be in the road. And it's, it's a faster paced road. It's, a, it's an exciting road. It's a meaningful road. It's a road of self-discovery, of maturity, a road that is going to teach you how to make big decisions, such as applying and deciding where to go to college. It's a road where your grades now are written in ink. They matter. They'll follow you from year to year. But it's an exciting road. And you're going to meet new people on this road. You'll meet a lot of new people next year on the road. You'll meet new teachers on the road next year. So I look forward to having you back to campus. Those of you who will be coming back, I look forward to welcoming you to this road. But even if you're not coming back, you know, you're ready for the road. And, and I know you'll do well. So congratulations on a great year. Congratulations on finishing the year. Uh, you're going to have a great summer, and you should. You know, have a healthy summer. Be safe. So you're even more prepared to begin your journey on the road after the sidewalk has ended. Congratulations. Thank you, Headmaster Taylor. We're gonna continue our service now with the familiar joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
Our first lesson. A reading from Proverbs. Happy are those who find wisdom and those who get understanding. For her income is better than silver and her revenue better than gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand and, her, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called happy. Mr. Hoffman, please. Here we go. A, a reading from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to do what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here ends the lesson. Ms. Karate, I'm gonna kick it back to you for the, for the awards. Before we go through the awards, I would just like to say um, I'm just so proud of middle school. I, I can't even I express it all the time, but I'm just very proud of every single one of you. Um, your commitment to your academics, attending all the community events, and just making the overall justice that you need to do in order to succeed and have a great term. So I just want everyone tonight to feel very proud of themselves who all rose to the occasion. So just everybody feel good, all right? Okay, I'll start off with um, our seventh grade math award. It goes to Jack Lashley. Congratulations, Jack. Our eighth grade math award, we have a show award winners here. Um, we have Kwaku Arthur Menza, and we have Jorge Escudero Ruiz Mateos. <laughs> okay, our seventh grade science award goes to Avery Ferraris. Congratulations. Our eighth grade science award goes to Jorge Escudero Ruiz Zateos. <laughs> okay, our seventh grade history award goes to Avery Ferraris. Congratulations. Our eighth grade history award goes to Nick Miano.
our seventh grade English award goes to Jack Lashley. Our eighth grade English award goes to Sean Kong. Uh, the seventh grade language award goes to Jack Lashley. And our eighth grade foreign language award goes to Nick Meow. Our fine art award goes to Rowan King. Also like to mention our eighth grade class as a whole um, for the, just the great project they did, the interdisciplinary project that they did um, with the history, um, with the mural that you did. That was absolutely outstanding. So congratulations to the entire eighth grade for that. Um, our performing art award goes to Kwaku Ortho And our instrumental music award goes to Kweku Artho Menza. Our award goes to Nick Piano. And our most improved middle school student goes to Misha Charlier. Before I get to the citizenship board and the general excellence, I do want to make mention to, um, this is unofficial awards, but our best dressed award is going to go to Dominic DeMeo. Although Dominic, I think Mr. Kellogg's giving you a run for your money today. Look at him, he's definitely looking dapper. <laughs> And we had one student who participated all the time in our spirit weeks, and especially in our spirit week of spring, which was really needed for the whole community. And he's just extremely creative in his office, and that award goes to Hunter Barron. Okay. Our seventh grade citizenship award is presented annually by the middle school faculty to a young man who best exhibits the qualities of a good citizen. Those qualities include consideration for others, a willingness to help out, and a genuine concern for the community as a whole. While several members of the community possess these qualities, one student's behavior, thoughtfulness, and consideration for others stood out. It is my pleasure to present the seventh grade citizenship award to Nicholas McAvoy. The eighth grade citizenship award is presented annually by the middle school faculty to a member of the middle school who has shown growth in character and in leadership. This year's recipient is a polite, kind, respectful, and thoughtful young man. He arrives to school prepared for the day's challenges and is there for his peers should they need guidance for helping him. When he speaks, which is not often, his peers listen to what he has to say. He leads by example and sets the bar very high for himself. It is my pleasure to present the eighth grade citizenship award to Nicholas Miano. Hoover Award for General Excellence in the Middle School is named for Maurice Jackson Hoover, class of 1941, and trustee of the school for over 20 years. Mr. Hoover played a critical role in the opening of the middle school and was himself an eighth grade student at Trinity Pauling in 1937. The Hoover Award winner is determined by the vote of the middle school faculty and is awarded to an individual who has demonstrated excellence in all areas. This year's recipient is a young man who possesses many talents. 
He's an outstanding student, earning high honors grades in all of his classes. He is a gifted athlete, participating on many team and individual sports on both middle school and upper school levels. He is a considerate classmate who works hard at helping new students find their way, helping them feel comfortable in the process. He continually challenges himself academically, athletically, and socially, and is always rooting for the best outcome for everyone. He enjoys competition and puts forth tremendous effort to give his best. It is my pleasure on behalf of the middle school faculty to present this year's Hoover Award for General Excellence to Jorge Escudero Luis Mateos. Congratulations, gentlemen. Mrs. Karate, if that concludes the prizes, we'll now turn it over to next year's head prefect, Peter Claro. Good evening, friends, parents, and faculty. My name is Peter Claro, and I'm the new head prefect at Trinity Pauling. I want to congratulate this class on getting to this amazing milestone, especially with the special circumstances we have today. I bet there's a lot going through your head at the moment. You're excited and nervous at the same time, maybe relieved and a little bit scared which are all normal things to feel like at a time like this. While I may not share the same TP middle school experience with you, I understand where your emotions are coming from. Despite having the same feelings you have now when I had my middle school graduation, I too am opening a new chapter in my academic career. I came from my hometown public school into this whole new atmosphere that is Trinity Pauling. I completely understand what it feels like to transition into something bigger than you've ever experienced or could ever imagine. Now in my new position, I'm going to need to take a lot of the advice I'm about to give you. In the world, there are plenty of valuable resources that people would like to have, like money, time, and in today's world, some toilet paper. However, at Trinity Pauling, there's a very special resource that if used correctly, uh, it can create a, a very successful TP career for all of you. That resource is the people, both the students and the teachers. More often than not, they are not only willing, but eager to help you. Surround yourself with people and invest in them because you will receive much in return. Some are, willing not, some are willing to help even if they don't know you well, but they might ask you to try something new or go out of your comfort zone. One of the greatest tools that kids learn at Trinity Pauling is the ability to ask for help. The big problem is usually that kids don't know who to ask or how to ask for help. A lot of this may come from anxiety or fear that they might not receive help by reaching out to someone. To that end, I would like to extend an open invitation for all of you. If any of you have any problem of any sort, come find me and talk to me. Like the other teachers on campus, this is part of my job. And I'm not only asking you, but I'm encouraging you as well. Maybe some of you have already been involved in the upper school through classes, sports, or clubs, which is great. I'd like to encourage you even further to get involved with something besides a class or a sport. Trinity Pauling has so much to offer, and it's important to get the most out of your few years here by doing as much as you can. There are kids who graduate TP and think, man, I wish I was in that play, or I wish I joined that club, and they miss the opportunity. TP gives you the chance to take advantage of as many opportunities as you want, and it's up to you to take them head on. You may not know it now, but you guys are more of a lifeboat for other students than you think. New freshmen coming in will be a lot more uncomfortable and nervous than you will, since it's a whole new life for them. There's no rule saying rising freshmen can't show other people the ropes of TP. You have the power to make someone's transition in the TP a whole lot smoother, but it requires you to step up, get out of your comfort zone, and help the newcomers with their growing pains. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that there will be challenges that you will face in the upper school. You'll get bumps in the road, there will be struggles, and you might even question if getting a high school diploma is worth all this trouble. I can assure you that every single student has thought these thoughts. And in a way, that's the beauty of it. We are all in the same boat, going through the same struggles and bumps that life accompanies us with. If there's one thing I've learned at TP, it's that through highs and lows, the brotherhood goes through it together. I can't wait to see you guys face to face, and let's go through next year together as a family. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, and congratulations on becoming the new head prefect at Trinity Pauling and for the many gifts of leadership you'll bring, not only to these students, but to the faculty as well. And congratulations to 
all of you for stepping up. I had the great privilege of teaching all of you this year, and uh, you've been leaders to me and brought me a lot of joy, so thank you. On that note, I ask that um, you bow your heads in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who is with us wherever we may go, bless these Cherney Pauling middle school boys on their day of stepping up and help them meet the new challenges that they will encounter as eighth graders and freshmen. May they grow each day more into your likeness and become more thoughtful, curious, and creative young men. Guide, protect, and keep them, O Lord, through these difficult days and grant them to obtain resilience in all that is just and true and good. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. O Spirit of life, wonderful counselor, let your presence in our midst make this school a fountain of wholesome activity and true knowledge. To her trustees grant timely wisdom. To her teachers the gift of inspiration and to her students a questioning spirit. That soundness of learning, loftiness of character, and a capacity for gallant living might be furthered in this place from generation to generation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this special day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please enjoy the school hymn.